Hello my friends, welcome to my channel, Lindy's Magpie Readings. I'm Lindy, I do read a lot and my tastes are eclectic. I finished a whole bunch of books in the last few days, so I've got many to tell you about, but I'm going to go over them pretty quickly. But before I get started on those, if you celebrate Christmas, I hope it was a good holiday for you nice and peaceful. That's the way I like it. Lori and I don't make a big deal out of Christmas. My gifts from her were all food things. Mm, lots of special treats. On Christmas Eve, we went walking along the Songhees walkway. That's uh, along the water that's called the West Bay in Victoria. So I will include a really brief clip of that at the end of this video. Maybe one at the beginning as well. Uh, and Christmas Eve was our dog Joni's second birthday. So here's Joni. She's a Shih Tzu mix. Before I get into the books that I finished, one thing I'll mention that I'm excited about in 2024 is doing a read-along of Vikram Seth's A Suitable Boy. I'm going to be telling you more about this probably in my next video, but it's not going to start until February. So if any of you are interested in joining me and Jolene of Bookworm Adventure Girl and several other readers who are excited about this book, then stay tuned for more information. Okay, the book that I finished uh, just last night is The Biddlemores by Jan Arden. Jan Arden is a singer, songwriter from Alberta. She still lives there on a farm and this is her very first novel. She has written at least three memoirs, the ones that I've read anyway, and she is very funny as well as uh, full of warmth and concern for other people and her humor really comes out in the Biddlemores. This is a novel set on a farm in southern Alberta, a failing farm. <laughs> Things aren't growing well there, the animals are not doing well and Mr. and Mrs. Biddlemore are just vile, absolutely horrid people and they're living with their granddaughter who's 14 and she wants more information about her mother who was 14 when she ran away and there are these like, dark fairy tale kind of elements balanced out with the humor that I mentioned and uh, the primary themes have to do with cruelty and kindness and animal welfare and I stayed up way past my bedtime finishing this. I used to go to bed at 9. I didn't shut the light off till 11 when I finished the last page. So it was really, really engaging. Uh, one caveat, if you have difficulty reading about cruelty to animals. Uh, I do caution you about this, but Jan Arden is an ardent animal welfare campaigner uh, on behalf of animals and she even has cows who have their viewpoint in here and I found it delightful. Next, I have some uh, Christmas-related reading. A couple of books of poetry by Carol Ann Duffy, both published by Picador, and they put out one of these a year. These were gifts to me from my dear friend, Kathy. Perfect Christmas time reading. So this first one, Christmas Eve at the Moon Underwater. 
has illustrations by Margot Carpentier and they're, they are whimsical, bright watercolor illustrations that go with a, a tongue-in-cheek humor that Carol Ann Duffy employs in here. Uh, and this other one, Dorothy Wordsworth's Christmas Birthday. The illustrations are by Tom Duxbury and they're more of a uh, classic printmaking style. Like that. Little gems. And if you've been following my channel, you know that through December I have been making my way through the short story advent calendar, one short story each day in December until the 25th. And I rated this collection five stars. I have enjoyed previous editions of this collection and this one is particularly good. So some of the stories have a Christmas related theme and uh, most of them do not. There's a whole range of uh, contemporary stories and uh, classic authors like Anton Chekhov uh, and yeah, just a lovely way to start each day. So now that I'm finished that, I am going to take up where I left off sometime early this year with reading One Poet a Day from this other anthology. When the light of the world was subdued, our songs came through. And it's an anthology of Native American poetry that's edited by Joy Harjo. I can't remember why I stopped making my way through this, but I was about halfway through, and now I'm going to continue on. Next, I want to tell you about this graphic novel, uh, Dreams of the Crow, from the Dreams series. It's the first volume, and it's by Wanda John Kahiwin with art by Nicole Marie Burton. Uh, Burton is a non-binary artist. Her style is its digital art. It's not exactly to my taste, but the story itself is a powerful one. It's a YA uh, level novel about uh, a boy named Damon living with a single mother, they're living in poverty, and she is addicted to alcohol. So her journey through uh, recovery, with many setbacks, is realistically portrayed in here. And Damon, uh, as one of the few Indigenous kids at his school, uh, and being bullied, uh, you know, those kinds of gritty realities are there, I think. This, there are a lot of kids who can identify with that, those real life situations. But there's also a fantastical element, uh, a crow that keeps appearing, uh, dreams that Damon has that seem to be a part of waking life too, or that affect waking life. So intergenerational trauma, uh, residential schools, and how they've affected Indigenous lives, the um, disintegration of family connections, community connections, those are all explored really well in here. And I'm actually uh, looking forward to the next volume in the series. Hi! Hi there! <laughs> that neighbor stopped off yesterday with treats for our dog. So speaking of dreams, next up, I have a nonfiction graphic novel about dreams. It's called I Must Be Dreaming and it's by the uh, New York cartoonist, Roz 
chast. Uh, I love her work. This one, I'm really glad that I borrowed it from the library and didn't buy it because it's a bit light in the content, although it did certainly make me smile and chuckle at times. But she not only talks about um, her own dreams and keeping a dream journal, but also uh, what we know about dreaming and um, what scientists and philosophers have said about dreaming and what our brains are doing when we're sleeping and, and dreaming. So, you know, it, what it mostly did was make me want to go back and look at my dream journals when I used to keep such things. Entertaining and light. Next, another graphic novel, and this one is highly, highly entertaining, long-running, fantastic series called Saga by Brian K. Vaughan and the artist Fiona Staples. Uh, I read the most recent com compilation, volume number 11, which is issues 61 to 66. And uh, in this narrative arc, we have uh, Alana, who is um, living with her two kids, trying to stay under the radar so many people are after her simply because of who she fell in love with and these scenes of her working at a giant warehouse called Fulfillment where she's filling orders just uh, it's so appropriate for I guess this time of year when consumerism and online ordering is the thing. The question of can love conquer hate is not only the focus of this narrative arc, but also the narrative through the whole series. And it's a great message and it's just done so very well. You want to start at the beginning with this series. There are millions of fans worldwide and I'm really glad that Vaughn and Staples have restarted their work on this after a hiatus. Next I have another graphic novel, Five Stalks of Grain. It's written by Adrian Lysenko and the illustrations are by Ivanka Theodosia Galadza, two Ukrainian Canadians. And this historical novel is based on uh, a true event, the Holomador, which was the death by starvation. Millions of Ukrainians starved between the years of 1932 and 1933 as a result of famine that was uh, brought about by uh, Stalin in the Soviet Union. And this story follows a pair of young orphans uh, who are surviving. The art has a uh, Ukrainian folk art uh, vibe to it, but this black and white also um, emphasizes the stark uh, life and death um, winter darkness, fear, terror, of uh, the, the story itself. So uh, I think it's a, a really successful book with lots of back matter information about the famine and the Ukrainian people. So I do recommend this very highly. And last up is another book that I highly recommend. This is my favorite of the bunch and I did spend all of December 
buddy reading this with my friend uh, Marilyn Maya Mendoza, who also has a booktube channel. I'll link it down below. It is Crane's Cafe by Cora Sandell, translated from Norwegian by Elizabeth Roken. The story is set in northern Norway. The entire thing takes place over two days inside a cafe, and the time period is between the First and Second World War. So actually the same time period as Five Stalks of Green. The story is told through um, multiple viewpoints, but in a sort of collective we. The voice of this town, which is um, narrow-minded and judgmental, and the scandal that's referred to at the beginning of the story is slowly revealed with a lot of humor and brilliant dialogue. Uh, it is a feminist look at how women were treated then and to a largest extent still are, uh, and attitudes towards uh, creativity and intellectualism. This book is superb, absolutely superb. And I loved it, and I also loved the opportunity to dissect it section by section with um, uh, another reader who loves to look at things really closely and look at language, and that is Marilyn Maya Mendoza. So that is all I've got for you today. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate your attention. I also love it when you interact with me in the comments down below. So if you've got anything to say about these books that I've talked about or what you've been reading or what you got for Christmas, please let me know love to hear from you. I will see you again soon. Bye for now.